obviously tough loss for us. Um, feel uh, very badly for our, our coaches, our players, their families, and um, you know the fans. Obviously, when you have a loss like this, um, it affects a lot of different people. So you go in a lot of different directions, I think, as you think about things. Um, you know, since then. But when you analyze the football game, you have to look at it and say we had some missed opportunities, too many missed opportunities on the offensive end, on the defensive end, and in special teams as well. You have to take advantage of those opportunities to win. I felt like we had an opportunity to win, win the football game, and uh, you know, we came away uh, empty. Michigan State head coach Mark D'Antonio often describes football as being a game decided by inches. The Spartans have lost four Big Ten games this season by a combined total of 10 points. The most recent setback, a 28-24 loss to Nebraska, came as Cornhusker Taylor Martinez threw the game-winning touchdown pass with just six seconds left on the clock. The four-point loss also ended MSU's seven-game winning streak in the month of November. I don't think we can ignore the elephant in the room, I guess is what you'd say, but you know, our game's been extremely close this year. Uh, you know, we've won three close games, and then we lost the four. And when you lose those four games, you're constantly looking at things that you could have done or we could have done collectively as a group um, to succeed in those areas. And in every single game, it's a little bit something different here, something different there, and that's the way football is. But uh, you've got to make the plays at the end of the game. You've got to have a good plan for it. Um, maybe our plan needs to be better. You've got to execute, there's no question. Our execution needs to be better. Um, there's no question at times our technique in those areas you know, falls short and then finally emotionally you have to be prepared to, to play in that point of the game. You have to be able to play you know, when everything's on the table at the end of the game and sometimes as much as anything that's game experience uh, as much as anything. These games that we've been playing Ohio State um, and some of the other ones have been lost by such a narrow margin. It is a game of inches you know it's just that one extra thing that maybe you can do during the off season to practice and, and make sure that your talents are up to spec and uh, make sure that you're ready to go because losing sucks. You know, being five and five is not what we wanted to happen, but um, but we're going to be stronger because of it. There there are lessons we can learn from every single one of these games, and um, when those lessons are going to be able to be applied and when that's going to come to light. I don't know, I don't know if any of us do know, but I think the important thing is, is to stay positive and keep uh, stay on the course. I don't think anybody's in a panic mode around here. I think that we, you know, we continue to try and critique and do the very best we can do. Uh, the one thing that I can say is after every football game, you know, we can look in the mirror and say, do I, do I do everything I can as a coach? Do our players do everything that they can as players? Uh, because you lose a football game doesn't make you a bad person. I think people need to understand that. Sometimes I, th I you know, I, I hear things out there and I say, well, wait a minute, the young man's a tremendous person. Uh, but um, you need to succeed. You know, I'm not naive to that fact as well. But there's no panic here. You know, we've been in this area before uh, as a coach. I think if you've coached long enough, you're going to be here at these points in times. And during these times, I think uh, the people that lead, whether it's your captains, whether it's your coaches, position coaches, whether it's the head coach, you know, they need to stand vigilant and, uh, and not panic. And, and everybody around them needs to understand that, you know, there's no panic in the situation. You lead from the, from the front. I don't think the problem is people aren't playing hard enough. I don't think the, the problem is um, people are getting down on themselves and not playing with effort, intensity, and hard work and everything like that. Um, the problem is the plays just haven't, haven't gone our way. But I think we responded well just because we haven't lost heart and we still play the game like the game is supposed to be played. Granted, we haven't won as many games as we would have liked to, and, um, but they were all close. And we, we still have the attitude that we want to go out and win. So given the fact that we haven't lost hope or haven't showed it or haven't you know, gone out there and just threw our helmets out there, but we, we've, we've brung our, our pads and we still play, we play hard. So I think that's, that means that um, we responded appropriately to whatever situation that we've been in. Now, I don't know when is a good time to have an open week. I don't know when is a bad time to have an open week. It really depends on how you function after. 
But we're banged up. We're mentally, I think, to the brink in terms of having four close games like this and losing some heartbreakers. We won the Wisconsin game the week before, and you know that was, uh, uh, you know, very exciting for our football team. But this last one against Nebraska, uh, it's time to take a mental a mental break as well. Physically, we need to to get healed up. We've got to recruit. Uh, our players need to turn their heads towards academics. We've got to lift a little bit more, and you know, sort of re-strengthen our bodies. Although we do it twice a week, we want to do it three times this week, and we want to also give them an opportunity to go home. You know, our players haven't been home for, you know, basically 12 weeks. Uh, you know, when you go into the summers and et cetera. So it's been a long haul for us. Uh, but, um, you know, I think our players are, will respond. I, I know we'll respond next week versus Northwest. We'll, we'll be ready to play. They'll come here ready to play as well. This season, the 5-5 five five Spartans have seen seven of their ten games decided in either the fourth quarter or overtime. As Michigan State enters its bye week, the players and coaches alike will have plenty of time to reflect on the inches won and lost over the first ten games. There are definitely lessons to be learned from all of those close losses. It's not only about winning football games. All that's great and it's very easy to stay up and stay alive and heap the praise when we're winning 11 games for two years in a row. Uh, that's the easy part. It's the down times, the times when you gotta pick yourself up. Uh, those are the times, I think, when you grow uh, internally as a team, when everybody has to depend on each other. Uh, and there are a lot of football teams, whether it's high school or college, that go through these situations and uh, come out the other end. And that's what we have to do. We have to look forward and, and push forward and fall forward. Well, the biggest thing is you have to respond, you know, and you, you have to, you know, let it sink in, you know, think about it, but then you just have to let it go and move on. You know, we always talk about being a man and you just have to own up to it, man up to it, and respond back. And the biggest thing is, you know, he always talks about you're going to fall, but fall forward, you know, and if you do that, you'll, you know, you'll be fine. You know, so many people can't do that and yet if you're you know we're a five and five team but I think we you know show that we're a better football team. Uh, Coach D you know it's right when we get here um, it he you know, instills to be a good person and um, you know when we when we're being good people and we can do we're like we're trying to be the best that we can that's just you know how it keeps going. Coach D talks about going through this uh, and it's only going to make us closer and, and the relationships with each other is what you know kept the the strive and the want to win um, because it's for each other. The whole scenario and ask yourself is glass half empty or is it half full and while we didn't win against Nebraska or Michigan or Iowa those three games even the Ohio State game you can point to areas in those games where you could say if this would have happened if this would have went this way um, you know, however you want to create it, uh, you know, you win the football game. And those are the things you have to look at. Do we have a chance to win the game? Is it us or is it them? Maybe a little combination of both, but you can certainly say we've got an opportunity to win the game and it really hurts after that football game. And in every one of those experiences, I came away sitting here on Sunday saying, should have won the game. Had an opportunity to win the game. If this happens, if this is played out here, if we call this, if we make a decision here, uh, but, you know, as usual, in hindsight's 2020, and you have to be able to react. And these decisions and these reactions are taking place at, in, in seconds, in real time, not TV time, not being replayed, but in real time. And uh, it's not as easy as it seems sometimes. Yeah, I, I think it's a great learning lesson, both in life and in football or athletics. Um, everything's not going to go your way. Everything's not going to pan out perfectly and smoothly it's not going to be handed to you on a silver platter I mean you got to work for what you get and I think that the guys understand that I think that we understand that um, we didn't have back-to-back 11 win seasons by chance um, and that you gotta you gotta put in what you want to get out um, I think the team has dealt with the adversity pretty good um, I think other teams probably would have broken up and started blaming uh, each other but we're the Spartans and we don't do that. That's not like us to do that. And uh, I think it's just great how we're still pushing each other and working hard in practice and 
just taking everything as a learning experience and I think this is good that we experience this. So. It's a huge experience for us, you know, when you look at, at our football team, uh, you know, I got the feeling like when Notre Dame came in here after they won, they felt it was a huge accomplishment. I got the same feeling when Ohio State won, the same feeling when Iowa won here. And you know, it's tough to lose at home. But you start to understand that, uh, that we're one of those football teams coming into this season that people said, hey, we gotta beat Michigan State, we gotta really play well to beat them. So you wanna take, take something away from this, that would be one thing, but on the other side of the thing spectrum, you've gotta say, hey, we've gotta play better and, um, we've got to be able to do this or do that or coach this or coach that or, or make a decision here or there to affect the outcome of the game in our, in our favor. It's not, easy, uh, it's not always as easy as it seems. It's tough, but um, you know, that's, that's, that's where we're at. You know, this game comes down to the end and it's inches. So we've got to find the inches. Max Bullen made a great point. You know, we just you know, we, we got to have that mentality that uh, we won't be denied. Uh, we know how hard we work. I know how hard these guys work, you know, being injured, being on the sideline, you know, watching them go through the grind, you know, and uh, seeing, you know, us coming through those, you know, those, those nail-biting losses. You know, um, we just got to, like I said, stay optimistic. You know, we got to remain positive to know that, you know, good things will come. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a lot of teams, you know, face adversity. It all depends on how we're able to respond. And uh, I feel, you know, next year we're going to have a great team. You know, our guys are gonna, you know, uh, they're gonna remain, uh, know how this feels to, you know, struggle. But you know, uh, you know, you're gonna win some, or you're gonna lose some. So uh, we got to be able to uh, take a step forward. Well, the young guys, a lot of young guys are playing. You know, on offense, you look at, you know, A. B. You know, wide receiver, and you know, they've never experienced, you know, going to, the, you know, the championship last year. Or, you know, having great seasons, but they know what it takes to win now. You know, they've been part of games that we've lost close games, and they know that. You have to get, you know, dig deep down, and I think that's that's going to help them in years to come next season when they have those close games. They know how to finish, and I think that's just going to help them out. A lot of the situations have been uncomfortable. I still wouldn't take them back, and I wouldn't change it for anything. So to a younger guy that's going through something similar, young in their career, I would tell them to um, roll with the punches, not to give up and really recognize the good that can come out of a bad situation. And um, just knowing that any kind of struggle you have in football and school and life in general, um, it's a huge opportunity to make you better as a person. So instead of running from the problem, instead of sulking from the problem, um, look at the problem, face it, and as a matter of fact, be glad that you have an opportunity for your character to be shaping and just go with it and see what happens in the end. Well, the biggest thing is that I think, you know, Coach Antonio, and with Coach Manny, you know, we were built to be tough, physical people. You know, that's what Michigan State is known for, is physical. And the biggest thing is mental toughness, you know, and we pride ourselves on that. And when, you know, when stuff goes down and it's not going our way, you know, we're so strong and we're able to respond. And, you know, that's what you have to do. You know, it's so easy to, when you're winning, having, you know, so many friends and, you know, being so close, but it truly affects your character when things aren't going your way and you're still that close as a team. You've got to take the wins to be able to move on, but you also have to be able to take the losses and move on as well. And that's a credit to the, our coaches and to our players and able to uh, enabling each other to get up every, every single week. But um, that's just the name of the game. If you start feeling sorry for yourself and pitying yourself, you're only going to go backwards. So the direction of this program will always be to move forward. Following the week off from competition, the Spartans still have a lot to play for over the final two regular season games. Michigan State needs just one more victory to extend its school record by becoming bowl eligible for a sixth consecutive season. The Spartans will face Northwestern in the home finale on November 17th, then conclude the regular season on the road November 24th against Minnesota. Hey guys, we are putting everything behind us, good, bad, indifferent, Okay, we're going to move forward from this point. Everything is geared towards beating Northwestern. We'll take it one game at a time from there, and we will end up having a great year, a positive year, something we're all going to be proud of. I promise you that, okay? Personnel-wise, uh, we're not overmatched. We can play with people. Uh, so from a skill level, you know, we're there. 
Uh, the second thing is that we have a resilient group of young people that get ready to play every single game. They come motivated every, every week and they come ready to play. Sometimes um, that's as big as anything. You know, I know in looking back at uh, our first year here in 07 and even looking back in 09, uh, there's a tremendous amount of satisfaction in the fact that, that we continue to be able to regroup and move forward. That I think just the mere fact that we have another opponent um, coming into Spartan Stadium, that we have two more games left, guaranteed games left, um, another chance to, to go out and, and fight for Michigan State to fight for the Spartans should just be enough. Um, not even looking at the rewards even, but just, just because we have some more people to play, that should be reason enough to go out there and give it to all just because somebody else is on the schedule. Right now as a team, we realize that what we have ahead of us is really a two-game season. And we realize that the work's not done and you don't evaluate a season after 10 games, you evaluate it after 12. So it's our job coming up next Saturday against Northwestern, it's senior day, so we want to send our seniors out on a high note going out of that stadium. All the work they've put in, all the, all the things they've helped us with along the way, it's truly important for us to send them out on a good note for their last game in that stadium. And then uh, a sixth win obviously makes us bowl eligible, and obviously we're, we're going to be working for a seventh win. But we truly realize that it's a two-game season, and all our focus is on these next two weeks. Well, it's important. You know, you want, first of all, the best for your young people and the best for your seniors because they're closing out their careers. It can be just as satisfying winning the last three football games as it can be you know, winning the last four or the last five. Ultimately, you want to go to that championship game and get to the Rose Bowl. But sometimes you need to reevaluate your goals and, and restructure things and say, okay, we can't do this. It's not mathematically possible, so you have to move in this other direction. And that's what we'll do. Uh, it's important for our program to go to six straight bowls from a standpoint of uh, recruiting, from the standpoint of working with our players. We only have nine seniors on our whole team. Uh, so, you know, our entire football team will be working, uh, getting ready for the next year during that bull practice as well. I think it's very important to the team and, and definitely to the seniors. Um, you know, this is our last go around and we want to end on a high note. Last year we saw how much fun it was at the Outback Bowl and so we definitely want to stay strong. We want to keep moving forward and end this season on a good note. We want to go to a bowl game, you know, and I think we will. And, uh, you know, the last two seasons you look at our record, we've never lost at Spartan Stadium. You look at this season, you know, we've had a few losses at home and, you know, this is our last, you know, our last time in Spartan Stadium for me as a senior. And I think a lot of guys on the team want to, like, want to send me and my fellow seniors out with a win. So when you look at our players, you see a lot of guys, guys that have endured. They've endured the uh, 09 season. They've had a lot of upside, you know, the 08 season. Competing for a championship the last game of the year, 08, 10, and 11. Uh, so they've, uh, they've helped really build the foundation, much like our last year's seniors. We've got a great recruiting class in place with some outstanding guys who've committed to come here. Uh, it's a smaller class because of the nature of our, of our setup here right now uh, with only nine seniors, but uh, very, very good football players. And, you know, we don't lose many players. So I know that we may have a couple guys that, you know, may test the waters a little bit but um, to go out early but I think if guys stay and make that commitment to being here uh, you know we can have an excellent football team. No position group has dealt with more adversity than the offensive line which has been decimated by injuries this season. Two days prior to the week three game against Notre Dame, senior offensive tackle Fo Vinotti suffered a season-ending knee injury. The good news is that as a result of the injury Bo has elected to take a medical red shirt and return for the 2013 season. He and his returning teammates look forward to taking care of some unfinished business next fall. When I first got injured, you know, I, I knew, uh, I was like, you know, what are my options here? And I uh, think about it, you know, I remember when I first got here telling myself, okay, only two years here, two more years here. And, uh, you know, because, you know, dealing with uh, being so far from my family. But, you know, when the, when the you know, opportunity presented itself, you know, I, in my heart, you know, I was thinking, man, it's another year away from home. But, uh, you know, I continue to pray about it. You know, I talked to it with my girlfriend as well as uh, her family, as well as my mom and, uh, you know, my entire family. Just, uh, you know, laying out the options. And, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was uh, as tough as it was. You know, it was, you know, straightforward answer. You know, I, I got to come back. You know, I just don't feel as, uh, you know, when I signed that letter of intent, you know, I devoted my, 
you know, everything to being a Spartan. And I don't feel as uh, I fulfill like, my expectations of that. So, uh, you know, deciding to come back and, uh, you know, going to war with these guys again, you know, I'm excited and I'm uh, truly thankful for the blessing. And uh, I just see it as a blessing in disguise. Phil coming back is, is huge for us in a lot of respects. Uh, one, obviously with the playing experience he's had, um, was a starter for us last year and then was a starter coming into this year before he got hurt. And then just his leadership and, and the presence that he brings in the locker room. Phil is one of the, the most well-liked guys in this team and, and the most respected guys in this team. So to have him coming back and to be in the locker room for another year is something that is really going to give the team a boost and is really going to uh, make everybody feel good. Well, he and uh, Travis Jackson, we've lost both those guys and those guys are both emotional leaders for our football team. They're guys that bring a lot of passion uh, to the game and they're, and they're excitable people. They've got experience, they've been there, they've played, um, you know, last year. And, you know, they're just emotional people. So I think it's a tremendous advantage for us having him back. Uh, excited about it, he'll be able to graduate and um, move his life forward. And uh, it's just another six months yeah. rather than going out in the spring, he'll be out of here in, in December. And I think it'll help him for his future in, in playing possibly professional football. Well, Foe's ability, having that extra year, will just, uh, it'll, it'll help us tremendously. The experience he has, the amount of his football IQ, his ability, his leadership ability, his ability to pull the best out of everybody around him will just continue forth and make 2013 very special. Coach D is, uh, was one of, the, one of the huge factors in, in why I chose to you know, move out to the Midwest. Uh, you know, just his, uh, his her whole persona. You know, he, he gives off that positive vibe. Uh, you know, he keeps it real with you. You know, he's gonna he's gonna tell you what you don't want to hear because a lot of time, you know, you gotta you know you gotta take that constructive trick, uh, criticism and use that. But uh, I just feel you know uh, you know a man of uh, great faith. You know that really provides a you know a, a positive vibe on our entire team. We just gotta learn to cherish these moments. Uh, you never know when you know adversity might hit your life, and uh, in my case, it, it hit me sooner than I thought. You know. Uh, Throughout the, throughout the entire offseason, you know, I just pray to God, you know, have a breakout senior year. And, uh, you know, next thing you know, you know, I'm out for the season. So, uh, you know, we just got to continue to uh, cherish these moments that we share with these guys. And, uh, you know, when, when uh, life's adversity hits you, you, you got to be able to deal with it. And, uh, you know, I just know, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, uh, you know, I just continue to put all my faith in God, knowing that, uh, you know, good things will prosper. Anytime you have a lineman coming back that has over a year starting experience and has been in the fire and been in the battle, to have that experience come back and have a guy that you know you can count on and trust, uh, to know what's going on and to be physical and bring the style of play that we expect. When you have that coming back, that brings a lot of confidence for a quarterback. We got to finish. You know, we got to finish. You know, uh, like I said, despite you know, uh, you know, our circumstances of this year, you know, we got to finish. And uh, for Coach D to, you know, uh, stay strong and that is just uh, really helping with us uh, deal with everything.